Okay, so let's just start here. Today we are going to learn things that will help us with the project, the final project in this class. So I believe if uh, you want to make very well in the project that you will have in this class, you'll have to concentrate very well in this lecture, okay? Uh, this is not, this will not be the project, but this is just an example, but our project will be much bigger than this. Um, just like initializing how we are going to model multi-story buildings on SAP 2000. So this is, is a 10 story building, and this is the typical floor of the story, okay? So to design any building, this is what you get, the architecture drawing. You don't get a structural system. You don't know where is the location of the columns, where is the location of the walls. You don't know any of these. But the architecture sometimes suggests locations, possible locations of the columns and possible locations of the shear walls, since our building is a thin story, so it will it's supposed to have shear walls to resist lateral loads. Since it's thin story, but if it's two stories, it might not have shear walls. Okay, but here we have our plan with suggested columns. This uh, usually the what we do, what the architecture do is this is the floor plan. He cuts in the middle of the floor and looks down. So when he cuts, he cuts in walls and columns. So this red lines is where are the walls and this like red rectangle areas is the columns. And we make a hatch here in yellow, which means that this column is cut in the middle. So that means like this column, like you made a section and then you cut the column and then you make a hatch, okay? All right, same thing for the shear walls. And how did I knew that this is a shear wall? Because it's a very big element, it, uh, like it's a very tall, and it's thin, so it's a shear wall, and it has a hatch, that means that my section cut goes through this wall, okay? So this is the very thing. So I knew from what I see that the, that the architecture made some columns and shear walls for me, but however, at some point, like, okay, these columns and shear walls will not work for me, and I need more. So you will have to discuss with him where to put the columns and shear walls, but let's go with this. And the thing, the, the second thing, after you look at the drawings, you need to understand the layout, like you are going to live in this apartment, okay? So let's see what we have. We have an elevator well here. So this is where are the elevators. And once you get out of the elevators, there is two doors and also there is a stairs because if you have a multi-story building, if you have an elevator, you're supposed to have a stairs because this is an emergency. If there's an earthquake or fire, there should be stairs. Elevators is not enough. Okay, so either you will take the stairs or you will take the elevators, you will land on two doors. Either you will go this way or this way, and it's a symmetric building. So if I make a cut in the middle, you will find that the apartment on the left is the same as the apartment on the right. So let's navigate this apartment. You will come from this door. Actually, let's hide the dimensions so that we can, let's turn this off. And let's turn the axes off. Okay. All right, so here's what we have. Once you get from this door, you will find a very long living room and you will have like something here and you will have a corridor here that will take you to like one bedroom, second bedroom, one bathroom, maybe a kitchen here, maybe to another two bedrooms here, one of them was a bathroom, and you will have maybe a kitchen or a bathroom. I have a problem with the phone, so it doesn't show is that a bathroom or a kitchen. And you will have like uh, an open area at this location where you don't have like, uh, maybe you don't have slabs or something. So it has cross, that means it's a void. And I have a void here and void there and void there. So let's assume that this void does not, doesn't exist. Let's, let's make it simple that we don't have a void here. But let's take into account the void due to the elevator, okay? So we know that there's an elevator, so it definitely there is a void here because the elevator had to cross stories and the slabs need to be cut. There is no slabs at this location and the elevator has to go uh, up, okay? And this is the architecture drawing. Once you understand the architecture drawing, you will start to build the structural system. You will remove all the walls and just put the structural system. So what are the components that we can consider as a structural system? Just three components or four components. Columns, beams, shear walls, and slabs, okay? The 
Shear walls and columns are vertical elements, but uh, the slabs and beams are horizontal elements, okay? So columns and shear walls carry vertical loads, but beams and slabs, so the loads, my load and our loads go to the slab, okay? And it's a horizontal element and take it to the beams and the beams take us through the columns and shear walls and sh the columns and shear walls take it vertically, column by column until transferred to the foundation and the foundation transferred the load to the soil. So this is how is the, uh, like the load cycle start from us, slabs, beams, columns, foundation, and then the soil, okay? All right, so we have our system like this and we will make our a structural system, just one plan that has only columns, shear walls, beams, and slabs. Okay, I will suggest that we are going to make this system as a flat slab system. And when, when I say flat slab system, like means that there's no beams in the middle, just columns and the loads go from the slab to the columns directly. It doesn't go to any beams. However, you can make beams. The, the flat slab is not as rigid as solid slab if you have beams, but sometimes uh, you like it's it's like it's not better like you can walk and see some beams coming out of the like some people don't like that, but it's much more stiffer. But flat slab also can perform very well. So we will go with the flat slab. Like we will sometimes like you will say, okay, I'm going to make a deal with this and cross from this wall to this wall and it's supported on these columns. And same thing here and same thing here. That's okay. And that's will help with the with the thickness of the slab. You will make beams, and this can result in you have a slab thickness of 12 centimeters. But if you remove the beams and make a flat slab, your system might have a slab of 25 centimeters. And the standards have a specification for this. Like it tells you if you are in a flat slab system, the slab thickness should be equal to this. But if it's a solid slab thickness, it will be half x rather than x. Like rather than 25 centimeters, you will be using 4.5 centimeters. Okay, so we will use flat slab. And here's my shear walls and here's the location of my column. So all what I need to do right now is to go to SAP 2000 and draw this system. So let's turn the axes on so that I can know where are my grids. So I have my grids here. I have seven meter and all these are five and one seven in the back. Same thing I have here, seven five, five until seven here, but I need to do more axes and I will tell you when. Okay, let's go to SAP 2000 and I will go to file, new model. And I will make my units uh, kilonewton meter, okay? And I will make grid only and then the grids blob up. So how many grids in the X direction that you can see? that will help me to build this model faster. In X direction, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's go with six. However, it's better to increase it, but let's go with six. I will, I'll just like say in a second, I will see, like, let's try and see there is, oh, I need to do more axes. So you will understand better. Okay, Y direction, how about Y direction? How many axes that I have that I should draw? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's put six and I Z, let's make one Z. However, I know that, that this will be a tennis story. So I need 11 Z, but let's just try first to build the two, two, 2D model and then move to 3D model, okay? Okay, how about the spacing? Are the spacing equal? No, I have seven and I have five. So let's go with seven and we can change it. Like I will say seven and then I will say, okay. All right. Okay, so what I will do right now, because I know that this is spacing are not seven. So I will click, right click on the screen and I will say edit grid. And actually you can go from edit and I'm not sure if there's edit grid here. But anyway, we can only, we can do it with this one now. And I will modify this grid system. I know that the, the first grid at zero and the second one at seven, but the third one is at, 
you guys remember we have seven five to so the second one will be 12 and the one after another five and the one after another five 22 and then we have seven at the end so what's the value here 29 same thing here zero seven 12 17 22 29 and i will say okay all right so now the grids are fixed but i need more grids why because i want to draw these shear walls so i need a one grid here that can tell me where these shear walls ends okay so let's assume that these shear walls are three meter in length so what i what i want i need a three meter grid here in X direction and another three meter grid in Y direction, right? And another one here before the end of the other grid with three meters. So let's modify the grids again. Did you know like, why do I need more grids? The, like I just said, like we need more grids because I need something that tells me where is this shear wall in. So I need to draw a one grid here and a one grid here. And also for this core, I need to know this core when it starts and when it's in. So we will assume also this shear wall is a three meter and it's one meter from here to here and one meter from here to here, okay? So what I will do is I will go to edit grid and modify grid and I will, you can add grids if you miss some, and you can write, where is this grid at? And I know it's at three meter from X. And I have another one before the 29 with three meters. So it's at 26. Here, I know that the, that the last grid here at 29, so there is one before with three meters, so it will be at 26 distance, okay? Same thing in the Y direction. I will add two grids, one of them at three, and one of them at 26, but I also need more grids for this core. So this core need a one grid at the middle, like uh, I know here, this is seven, five, it will be 12 plus 2.5, it will be 14.5. So I need a one X grid at, what did I say? 14.5, right? In the middle. Okay. This is in X direction. So how about Y direction? I have a grid here at 12, and I need another one at 13, and another one after three will be 16. So 13 and 16. So I will add 13 and 16. And it will be rearranged. And when I say, okay, here's my new grids. So right now I can draw the entire system, slabs, beams, columns, so I prepared the grid. So I'm ready to go to the next step. So what is the next step? After defining the grids, what is next? Define sections. So I will go to define sections, but before sections, let's define material and check this materials. Actually, I will keep using these materials, the 4,000, pound per square inch concrete, I will use it in my model. But if you want to modify it, you can modify this or you can add a copy of this and you can name it concrete certified. And you can say it's 3,500 pound per square inch. And you can change all these parameters. The weight per unit volume, the modulus of elasticity using the equations from the, the standards, and you can change the whole thing. But we will not go deep into materials because this is an analysis course, but you based on the your construction project and what is the standards that you are following, you will put the materials that you are going to use. And then I will say, okay, and this is my material concrete 35 and I'll say, okay. Then I will go to the sections. Right now I have slab sections, beam sections, wall sections, column sections. Let's take them one by one. And all of them are concrete. So let's do the frame sections. 
Okay, so I'll add new property and let's make concrete column. And here I have two types of columns. One of them are 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter rectangular column. And one of them is, uh, sorry, this is a square column and this is rectangular column. This is will be 25 by 70. So let's define two types of columns. I'll name this one C1 50 by 50 centimeters. And since my unit here is meter, I will put 0.5 and 0.5, and I make sure that I put my material concrete certified, and I will say, okay, this is for the column one. And I can add a copy of this property and keep changing it, and I will say this is column two, 25 centimeter, 25 by 70 centimeter. The depth is 0.7, and the width is 0.25 centimeter and the material is concrete 35 and I will say, okay. I define my columns, let's define the beam. I make a rectangle beam, I will call it beam one and I will assume that project has a beam of 25 centimeter by depth 70 centimeters. Okay, so let's make this 25 centimeter, 25 by 70 centimeters and here I will have 0.7 depths and 0.25 width and I make sure it's concrete 35 and I'll say okay and for the walls right now and also for the columns I know that the columns if I make a 2D system the columns will not appear in the 2D it will be just supports right it will be hinged and the same as the walls it will be hinged okay but what I want to do I want to go Great section here that tells me where are where is the wall, so that I can draw hinges at the location of the wall. So let's make a section, and we will call it add new property. We will call it wall dummy. Okay, will be a dummy cross section that is very small, point zero zero one, and point. Zero, zero, 001, like a very, very small, tiny section. And I'll make it whatever material, it doesn't matter because we will delete it anyway. We just need it as a guidance to know, to tell us where is the where are the walls so that we can put supports. And I will say, okay, and I have my wall dummy here. Okay, I defined all my cross sections, okay? And let's finish the whole definition thing. Let's go to the load patterns. And like your homework problem, you have on weight, you have flooring, you have live load. Let's use the same amount of loads. So we will have dead for the on weight. Let's make another one for the flooring. And it will be dead, but we will clear this and make it zero and add new battery. And let's make another one that is live. And let's change this to live load and add new load battery. So I have three load patterns, one of them is the own weight, dead load, flooring dead load, and live load. Yes. Oh, we didn't draw the geometry yet. We are just preparing the model. We didn't draw anything. We didn't assign anything yet. So this is just grids. But I can define the loads before even build my model. So this is just uh, basic definitions of my model. So after defining the grids and identifying the location of each grid based on the AutoCAD file that we have. So the next step is to start drawing the sections that we defined. So we have some defined frame sections that we defined from before, the beam, the columns, and the walls. So we also have the, um, the slab sections. So we need to define the slab sections. So let's add a new section. And we will call this section slab 25 centimeters. And it will be shell 10, 25, 25. Make sure that the material is right. And then we will say, OK. So and then we will say, OK. And we will define another section for the wall section. So we have wall 30 centimeters thickness. And let's change the membrane thickness, 0.3. 
endpoint three. In this model, I defined uh, a new material. I mean, like I used the default material. Uh, I don't have the other material that we defined in the uh, lecture. So we will stick with the 4,000 PSI. It is the same material that we used in the lecture, but it has different name. Okay, and then I will hit okay. And then I will say, okay, one more time so that I confirm that I defined two area sections. One of them is a slab 25 centimeters and the other is wall 30 centimeters. Right now I'm ready to draw uh, my structure. So let's just start by drawing the beams. I have here, I need to make sure that I'm drawing the right beam. It's beam 25 by 70 centimeters. It's on the perimeter of the building like this. And we also have a beam at the core here. So if you look at the AutoCAD file, you will find that we have a beam at this location. All right, so we are done with the beam. Let's draw the dummy wall element. And as we agreed, this will be a dummy element to tell us where are the walls. Okay, I have walls here, here, here. And there I have a core. So I draw all the walls. The next thing is I need to draw the location of the columns. So I will pick point, draw special joint, and I will draw joint here. And I know that there is columns here at these points and edges in here. these edges and this corner. Okay, we can select these joints. So actually we can select uh, we can select them manually. So I'll click escape and I'll click on these points. This point. Make sure that I select all the columns. And I will tell you right now why did I select all these columns. And then I assign them to group. So I'll go to assign to group and new group and or define new group. And then in the definition, we will add new group and we will call it columns. And then I will say, okay, okay, okay. So if right now, if I go to select, select groups, and if I click columns and say select, all these columns will be selected. And this is what happened in the lecture. It didn't, it didn't get selected because there's something going wrong either with the software, with the computer. So that's why here's the groups working. So actually right now I can assign, since I know that there's columns at these points, so I can assign joint restraint and assign hinge restraint at these points. And then I can say, okay. So I made hinges at these points. So, because I know that there's columns at this, at these locations. All right, so the next thing is I will draw the slab. So I will draw a rectangle slab and I make sure that it's a slab 25 centimeters and I will make one big rectangle with a slab 25 centimeters. So here, if you want to see the, the filled element, so you can click on set display options either from view and you click on set display option or you can con use control W to open the set display options and go to general options and you can fill these objects apply Okay, so you will be able to see how this slab look like. As we learned from previous lectures that we need to select this slab and divide it with the grid. So I select it, edit, edit area, divide area, and then we will click on this one, intersection with visible grids. And I will say apply, and you will find that the it was divided with the grids. The second, is that you will select the slab one more time, but right now it becomes pieces. 
Okay, you can actually select the entire model like this, and then you go to edit area, and we only have one area type right now. So all the operations that I'm going to do right now, it will only happen to the area sections. So all the frame sections and the joints and the supports, there will be no operations on these elements. And then I will hit the second choice. I need to divide this area 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter. And then I will say, okay, right now I will have my area is divided as we can see. Uh, to make my model better, so I will go to object and then I will make the joints invisible and I will say apply OK. I will do the same thing for this view and I will make the joints invisible. Apply OK. All right. So before I move on, I know that there isn't any slab at the core location. So I need to remove the slab section at the core location. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this area and this area and delete them because there is no slab at this location. All right, so the next thing is, I know that there is a shear walls, but what I'm going to do, I'm not going to model the shear wall right now because I'm only doing 2D model, but I know that the shear model make restraints on the slabs and it act like a support. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the points that intersect with the at the location of the shear wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these joints, the points at the core. I know that there is a wall at this location. Okay, I think I lost my selection. So I'll get previous selection and let's continue selecting, selecting here. And I know that there is a hinge here. And let's restore back the uh, full view. So I make sure that I'm okay. There is a still some walls here need to be selected. Just make sure that you don't select uh, more points other than the points that has walls. And to save the selection, I will assign it to group. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign the group and add define new group and then I will find columns so I'll add new group and I will name it walls say okay 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 so I have another group is called walls and so what I'm going to do you can select select one more time groups and you can select walls and then say select and then let's assign supports at these joints restrain and we are going to put hinges all right so right now we have hinges at the locations of the walls right now i believe my model is ready to put the loads on let's get the area section back and let's make the joints not in view so that our models looks better more clear but actually we will not be able to see the support, but this doesn't matter. And what we are going to put here right now, we are going to assign load. So I will select all the area and I will go to assign area loads, uniform shell, and I'm going to put one kilo Newton per meter square as a flooring. And I will say apply. And then I'll select one more time all the areas and I will go to live load and I'm going to have this as let's go to the um, the SAP homework I think the live load was like 1.92 kilonewton per meter square and let's apply okay so right now we have our model ready to be analyzed so let's run the model and when we start to run the model, it will ask you what cases that you want to run. So I will do not run the case that is called model and I will hit run now. It asks for to save your model. So let's save our model. Here, 
thousand slab twenty five centimeter. Actually, let's look in your folder. Slab twenty five centimeter, and let's change the name a little bit so we'll make it flat slab. And this is the folder. And let's name the file the same thing. I will hit save. All right, so my model will run right now. It will take like a minute or so. Since I have a very small mesh, 0.5 by 0.5, and my model is 29 meter by 29 meter. So it will take like a few minutes to. So right now the analysis is complete and we are getting results. So I knew the issue that happened in the lecture feels like I was saving the, the, um, the model on, uh, on the network. So when I tried to save the model on my computer, it's running right now. But this is still like weird, like, but anyway, um, I'm not sure why it's taking too much time, but here we go. Let's navigate the results. If you want to show the deformed shape, so what I'm going to do, I will click on the deformed shape button due to the date loads, and you can draw contour lines in the UZ Z direction because we want to show the deformation in the vertical direction. And then I will say apply, okay. So here's it shows the deformation. Yep. So let's go to the full view. And if we want to show the bending moments, so we'll go to shells, M11 due to the dead load and say apply, okay. And we will be able to see the bending moment if we make this X, Y. So this is how is the bending moment look like. So let's change the uh, options tools and sorry, options, and then we go to colors, display, and let's make this a black background. So this is how the bending moment look like. And um, if you want like to take a section, you can draw section cut here, for example, let's draw a section cut. Here, show section cut from here to here. Uh, yeah, so here's the shape of the bending moment. As you can see, there's a straight, like there's a significant moment at the columns locations, but here there's a normal moment at the locations of the slab. And this is for the 2D model. So uh, if you want to show also the, uh, the 2D bending moment on this slab, but on in Y direction, so you can also apply. And then you will find that this is the shape of the bending moment. All right, so this is bending moments for slabs. What if I want to show bending moments for frames? So I can click on frame section and show M33, apply. Okay, but I will not be able to see this in the 2D, so we'll have to convert this to 3D. And right now, 
actually I can see the venom moment here on the beams. I can click on the beam, like right click. And when you do a right click on the beam, it will, you will have like a small box like this that shows you how is the bending moment on this beam look like and how is the deflection, the shear force, everything on this beam, you can find it. Right, so next step is that we need to confer, to convert this model into a 3D building. So let's see how can we do this and hopefully we will be able uh, to do it. I mean, like what's the, uh, the technical difficulty with the SAP 2000. So let's unlock this model. And once I look the model, all the results will be gone. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the group section groups and I will select columns. I select these joints. So as we learned it last time, we are going to convert these joints to columns. So I will edit and then you will find that there is uh, an order is called extrude and then you will extrude these points to frames. So another window will open and I will say that this frame is 50, column one, 50, 50, and the extrude is zero and X, zero and Y, and negative three and Z direction. And I only need one column down, not two. And I'll say, okay. So right now I can see the columns, but the thing is the, from the AutoCAD file, the columns on the corner in the corners is different from the columns and the edges and also the interior columns. So I have this is 25 by 70 centimeter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these corner columns. I'm going to rotate my model and select the other one. And I'm going to assign a new section, frame section. It's called C1 to 25 by 70 centimeters. And I will say, okay, okay. So right now I have different column. If you want to see the 3D view or the 3D element, you can go to general options and you can say, I need to see extruded view. When you apply this, everything will be in 3D section. Here you can see your columns. restore full view and then I'll say let's remove the extrude and make it standard back because it will be heavy All right so right now I'm done with the columns so let's get done with the walls so for the walls I will select the dummy wall section frame section it's called wall dummy select them all and then what I'm going to do edit edit line sorry extrude uh, extrude lines to area and then a box will open and I'm going to select the area wall 30 centimeters, negative three, one, and delete the source object. And then I can say, okay. So I'll find that my area sections are created and the frame section wall dummy is deleted. So next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the wall sections, wall 30 centimeters, and I'm also going to select the points on this wall section. Select, select groups, walls. And you will see my selection here. And I'm going to divide the wall with the slab so that the slab can feel that there's a walls at these locations. So I'm going to edit, edit area, divide areas. And then I, I will hit divide an area with selected point objects, apply. Okay, I will select the walls one more time. Select, so let's let's zoom in a little bit and see how is the walls is divided with this lab section at each joint. Then I will select the wall one more time. As you can see here, I select them all. And I'm going to edit area, divide the area, and I'm going to divide this area in, into 0.5 by 0.5. Or 
you can choose to divide them along the edge one, three. So I know that there is edge one, two in the X direction and edge one, three in the, uh, in the vertical direction. And we can make this one and we can make this six because I know that the story, the story height is three meters. And if I divide it three meters to six pieces, it will be 0.5 each. Or you can divide the area into object 0.5 by 0.5. So either one of these. So let's apply this and see how it looks like. All right. So let's see how is the area look like right now. Yep. Let's zoom in. My area is divided into six pieces in the one three direction and still divided with the slab. Okay, if I run my model right now, my model is not going to feel that there is walls and there's columns in the 3D. So what I'm going to do, because I have the supports still at the at the ver at the at the slab level. So I'm going to select all these supports. I'm going to select assignment, join supports, and select all of them. And I'm going to assign joint restraint and I will remove all these restraints. And then I will say apply. Okay. Then I need to select the base of the columns and walls and assign restraint to these elements. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to edit the grid and add new grid, modify, add a grid Z at negative three. And we'll say, okay. Okay, I have a new grid here. So I may, if I make this X, Y, and I go down with the arrows here, move down. So if I select here, all the joints, Let's close this. Let's add new window. And let's make it X, Y. And let's go down. And let's make selection. OK, so there was a problem with the view and the previous view. Then I was able to select all the joints. Right now, I can assign joint, restrain, and then hinge, and then apply. Okay, looks like this version has some problems. And yeah, I know that SAP 2000 sometimes has problems, but this version has lots of problems and that's reasonable because it's a new version. So there might be lots of bugs, uh, but anyway, um, we are figuring this, this out. So right now I moved my supports and if I run my model, I will be able to get the same bending moment and the same internal forces. But what I want to do in this example, I want to convert this 2D example to a 3D example. But before this, I want to give you a hint that we have some little, a little problem here. And this wall, because this wall, when we divided the slab section, it, it doesn't have any joint with the slab. So it was only divided in the direction 313. Three. So I'm going to select it one more time and I'm going to edit area, divide area. And I'm also going to divide it to, let's see. I have, this is divided one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are going to divide it into six elements in one, two direction, but one, three direction, it will be still one piece. If I say apply, okay, I will find that the wall is divided to uh, similar as the adjacent walls. All right, and also let's go to the X, Y direction and go down and more joints were created here. So I'm going to assign joint, restrain, hinge, and then I'll say, okay, close. All right, so all the hinges are good. My model is good. I'm not going to run it because it go it's going to take lots of time, but I'm going to build the 3D model so to do this, let's see how's our three model look like. And I'm going to change the 3D view from view set 3D view. And I'm going to change this angle to zero, this angle to zero, or
apply. Okay, so right now this is a 3D view. So if I select all my structure like this, what I did here, I'm trying to select just the structure without the uh, joints. So if I go to the 3D right now, I will find that all my structure is selected except the joint. And then I will say edit. And then we have another order is called rep replicate. I'm going to re replicate this floor to another nine floors. And it will be in the Z direction with height three meters. And I need nine stories and don't, don't delete the original object. And I will say apply. We'll take a minute. And the model will become much heavier. But I believe if you are running the SAP 2000 in your computer, maybe it can be much faster if you have SAP 2000 installed in your computer and you are not working on a shared network. All right, so the 3D model is done and I will say, okay, so I have my 3D model here. So actually, yeah, it, it will become more heavy to like maneuver and see how is your model look like. And it will become more heavier if you showed, showed the extrude view of your building, it will take a little bit to show how is the building look like. So yeah, here's your 3D story building uh sorry it's a 10 story 3d building of your structures and then you can run your model and then can get results but let me tell you we only need this model to run lateral load analysis and we don't need this model if we, we are going to design the slab the beam or the gravity loads 2d model is enough so this model is only if you are going to uh, do a wind load analysis, seismic analysis. So we need a 3D model. And if we are doing this, we don't have to divide our mesh to be like 0.5 meter. We can do one meter, two meter. This uh, resolution will be enough. All right, so that's all for now. And see you guys next lecture where we are going to use ETAPS to build the same model.